All right, everybody, welcome in. My name is Joe, and let's jump into some chess. So I have got the black pieces here, and my opponent leads off with a standard e4, so we'll just go with an e5. Um, my rating has ballooned a little bit, so I'm going to be playing against a lot tougher opponents than I'm used to. Um, there are going to be times that I lose, in fact, I'm prepared to lose many games going forward because the quality of my opponent has jumped up a notch. And um, yeah, it's going to be tough, but that's okay. You know, the, the, the tougher opponents we play, the more it forces us to think, the more it forces us to um, try to see things as they happen and understand the game. So I'm prepared uh, for my losses, but plan on playing as good a chess as I can anyway. You know, we got here playing good chess, so we're going to keep doing it. All right, so we're in the Italian game. I'm expecting one of these two moves. Yep, so this is the um, the very quiet game. Now the choices here are which way do I want to develop next? I have tried many times in the past to make d5 work, and every time I do, I always end up in awkward positions. Um, so it's gonna be one of these two, and I'm just trying to decide. I think I'm gonna stick with the standard move order, get the knight out, get ready to castle, um, if my opponent tries anything sneaky, I'm ready to castle, and the, the pressure along here is no bueno. All right, now in this, um, I have to look at things, because my opponent has one, two attackers in that pawn, and I only have one defender on it, right? Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start by trading off this first pawn, and now retreating my bishop. And actually, uh, cancel, cancel. I'm going to retreat my bishop all the way back. Um, my rationale is I have had too many times where people continue to push forward and end up trapping one of my pieces. So I'm going to go all the way back. Um, this is a tactical retreat, right? So now my opponent is looking for this type of uh, maneuver. That's okay. I've got it covered. Oops, not that. This way. I've got it covered. One, two, I've got one, two, we are okay. My opponent trades both of his pieces for one of mine. Okay, so now we're onto a very strong attack. My opponent is coming at me um, with the big guns. And I want to make sure I don't screw anything up in the process. Um, this is defended. Right, so we gotta watch out for that. I'm thinking if I grab here that comes with an attack on the queen, my opponent's queen is gonna move. Can I rotate my knight around? It is defended and it will help relieve some of this pressure. Let's try that. I'm not sure if that's the way I wanna go or not. Actually, if my opponent rotates this way, yeah, I have to be careful because no, there's no checkmate, but I can push. Okay, so now this knight is undefended, so we have to do something. We could do a couple things. Number one, we can push here and add a defender. Or two, we could retreat. There are no pawns, so let's defend. You know what, what the heck, let's defend. Let's solidify that guy for now. And then as my opponent trades um we end up dropping a pawn in the process that is okay because we're going to start here no we're I have to look captures captures yeah let's try this obviously my opponent could start here and i'll i'll go there Or will I? Yeah, I think so. So my opponent's playing very aggressive moves, and I'm just trying to make sure I fight fire with fire. So now the question is, what, what's, what's the plan here? What's the plan here, Stan? So which one do I capture? I have my choice. If I capture here, capture here, my opponent captures back, Capture here. There's one, two attackers here. I do have one, two defenders here. Okay. 
capture here or capture here with an attack on the queen. My opponent's queen captures back. This is defended. Um, I might be able to force a queen trade. Let's do it. Let's do it. So I'm assuming my opponent's going to grab back here. Right? So we traded pieces, and now my opponent has to figure out what they're going to do. If they grab here, I'll probably grab the bishop this way. Okay. Give our bishop, get our bishop out and about. It's trying to trying to focus to make sure my opponent has some some real strong distractions right down this outside file that I have to be really careful about. Um, I'm really not comfortable moving that that knight unless I have to. So I have a double attack here. My opponent has shut it down, which is which is smart. Um, we could go here now. We could force this queen trade and maybe undouble our pawns in the process. We're only up a pawn, but we have managed to get get the get you know avoid all the crazy things that my opponent was going to do so we have we've survived the opening we've now transitioned into a middle game and um yeah we've played good chess at this point in time so there is an attack on this pawn it's an attack on this pawn if i push and my opponent rotates around am i going to survive that i don't know Yeah, let's see if we can push here and get um, connect four. You know, let's see what we can do. Okay, so here is where things are going to get a little interesting. Um, capture, capture. In fact, I'm going to pre-move that just to get a couple seconds back on my clock. Uh, there, there, there could be a time scramble here at the end, but we both have t plenty of time. Now that we're in the middle of the game and we've got... Uh, ooh, that is interesting. Why is that interesting? Because that comes with check. Okay. Let's start here. And if we if we give up a rook for this, then that's okay. Uh, but we grab the undefended piece. My opponent captures. That comes with check. Okay, that's an undefended piece as well. And we are way up in material now. So not only have we survived the onslaught, we are moving, um, moving right along into an end game that's going to favor us. Wish I could get my knight here, you know, but that's a difficult uh, maneuver. Um, obviously, this is an interesting pawn that we would love to get rid of question is how do we want to get rid of it if we take that creates a pawn island um i would love to push let's start with this rook move 
that prepares this pawn push. Ah, I missed it. I missed it. There's an alignment issue that my opponent missed. There's an alignment issue there that my opponent will need to take care of. Obviously, if my opponent pushes... Okay, so this... is the danger zone. If my opponent captures, I, they, I get to capture back. Um, if my opponent captures, I get to capture back. I'm going to continue with my pawn push. This rook is, is a danger zone, but my opponent could just trade off more material. But this pawn is, is become a, a big boy. That's a big boy pawn right now. Okay, so now there's a double attack on that pawn. And my opponent drops a piece again here. Now, let us pick up material. And if we trade, we just keep picking up material. And we're just going to pick up material. Uh, let's start. I'm trying to decide if there's any any reason to hold on to this bishop at this point in time. The game's pretty much over. Let's just go ahead and sacrifice that. Force my opponent to capture. We'll capture this guy back. And then we just bring our Rook over, cut the king off, and we have triple connected pawns. And my opponent resigns the game. So, um, good game. Well played to my opponent. And our winning streak continues somehow. So, we are now 1625 in rapid. Coming from 1500 a little while ago. So, you know. Um, Go figure, right? So we keep playing good chess. We keep making good good things happen, and and uh, you know we uh, we just try to play the best chess we can. We get we get lucky. Um, sorry, my heart is just pounding right now because I was a little bit more nervous playing this game than I thought I would be because I fully expected to lose here on camera, and not losing on camera means that. Um, uh, a little, a little shaky right now. So, okay, let's let's go back, let's take a look. So, I don't know why I was so nervous going into this game, but you know, the the stakes are higher. But not really. I mean, whatever. We just we play more games, right? We play more games. Rating. It's not all about rating. Anyway, my opponent leads off with the king's pawn game. We transition into a very typical Italian game, and then we end or Gioco piano. So this is the Italian by Black pushing their bishop up in that mirror, which is what I recommend. You end up in the Gioco piano. Um, it's a very safe game for both players. Uh, there are some subtleties to it, obviously. And you saw that I had to retreat my bishop back um, to a safe square. So bishop to, um, to e7 here is a very safe defense. Um, it basically means that everything gets, gets over-defended. But the Italian game is also a very safe defense. So this is the classical Italian game, the Gioco Piano, um, supporting one of these pawn moves. Um, you could go into the Gioco Pianissimo, the extra quiet game, the very quiet game. Um, this defends this pawn. So when uh, black rotates the knight up, there's no attack here. And then eventually black will push these pawns. But my opponent decided to go with, um, um, with a, a C3, which is the very traditional Italian opening. Um, so in the Gioco Piano, my opponent transitioned back to the Italian game. Classical Italian game, not a big deal. But you can see there's still 742,000 games played from this position in the database. I made the most common move. Um, you can see, yep, one and two most common moves are knight f6 by huge margin and then d6. Um, but this is all stuff that I'm familiar with. So this is what's called my opening preparation, right? So I know how to play this. And then my opponent attacked in the center. Um, the most common move is e-capture. Again, if you choose to retreat now, attack immediately comes with an attack on your knight, so you have to reposition the knight. And if you capture here, 
um, there is, yeah, there are some issues because now this battery is eyeing up um, essentially checkmate. Um, Black would have to castle here to get out of checkmate and then they lose the, the knight anyway. So it's not, it's not a free pawn. This is what you call a, a poison pawn, right? Um, so it's not a free pawn. So the knight has to move or you give up the other knight. So it's better in this case to go ahead and capture first, just the first trade, and then you don't have to go after the second one because again, you'd be giving up a knight for a pawn. Uh, the opponent wins in that case. And so the, the most common moves are, oh, there's a check here. Rotate the bishop out this way. Um, black can easily defend in any number of ways. If black defends with the bishop, yeah, capturing and getting rid of that, um, getting rid of one of the opponent's bishops um, is a very strong move. Um, but it, it allows white to develop, you know, as they as they retake. So it's it's better for white, you know. Yes, you give up that bishop, but you do gain development, you know. Um, black loses a tempo, having to repush and then repush. That's three moves with one piece, whereas white is. Um, moving a new piece every single time all right um so where are we so yeah we did the italian game uh, my opponent went for the traditional line i captured the first time and then i retreated all the way back to e7 as you can see here it's the third most common move bishop to b6 can also exist the only challenges are um, it does allow your opponent to really push the center it's a little bit aggressive from your opponent and it could be a little bit overextended notice that this knight is now attacking both of these and by pushing this pawn you do not have that queen check anymore um, but you do have that so it's it's a hard position for both players um, no not that one um, you'd probably have to rotate the knight back along this way or you probably have to jump the knight this way and try to attack the bishop um, notice the bishop can't rotate along the same diagonal because the knight still would be able to trade, off, trade it off. So the knight to a5 or the knight back to e7. So it's, it's a possibility, but you do allow this overextension from white. Uh, it's something I didn't want to deal with. So you saw I retreated. This is a very safe square. So I have now basically transitioned to that really safe opening um, from the Italian this Hungarian defense. Um, it's a very, very safe defense for black. Um, and essentially we transitioned into it with an exchange in the middle. Uh, I don't even know if it shows up here now. I don't, I don't know what these are. All right, so we, there are still over a thousand games in the database where E5 is played from this point. Um, and my opponent went for this knight attack. Notice again, there are two attackers here, but by developing our knight when we did, it's just like those fried liver attacks. This one will fizzle out um, simply by castling. The queen attack here does add a level that I was not expecting. Uh, this made me a little bit more nervous than I, than I probably should have been. Um, if we turn on the evaluation, black is way ahead, way ahead with this. So this is not a good move for white, apparently. I was really concerned that it, that it could be. I was really concerned that this could be a deadly series of attacks. Uh, if this bishop got unleashed somehow, you know, because this knight and queen are uh, threatening checkmate, but this knight is standing in the way. So if you remove this knight, maybe something like this, you remove that knight, you, you can have a strong attack. But apparently I did not have to be worried at all. It, it, would, it looks like it takes white too many moves to really get into position to take advantage of this attack um plus having this extra bishop here i mean it is really really over defends this knight so black is perfectly safe here and in fact black is way ahead um the engine wants me to push d5 first or capture with the knight and i went for the knight capture so i found a good move there Yeah, this comes with check, but it's it's perfectly safe. So I'm up a pawn. Is that really it? I'm just up one pawn. My opponent moved, and wow, the evaluation completely changes. Man, I would have loved to have gotten a pawn up here. 
the engine even wants me to go ahead with it now look at that fork look at that fork completely blowing away so even though you sacrifice two pieces you don't even sacrifice it's just one piece one piece there the king has to move uh the best would be there yeah you don't even lose the knight at the end of that wow that's a huge fork okay uh, i missed that let's turn the engine off for a second i went for solidifying and you see that um, the engine is still says that that's a huge advantage for black uh, by solidifying that knight, but they were way better options. Um, other than that, yeah, C5. Oh no, C5 is a second, second move the engine likes, so go figure. Um, yeah, straight up capturing here. But it does drop here. Is that a problem? No, because you can pick back up and you still have plenty of attackers here. Okay. Interesting. All right, well. I went with the, um, the defensive strategy. Strategy. My opponent brought his bishop out. We'll leave the engine on for now, just to see what, what, what it looks like. Because why not, right? All right, and then from here, I, I push d5. Again, the engine's most, most liked response. Because um, there is a double attack, and you are looking at giving up a, um, giving up a, a piece. And then here's the big question. Which way does the engine want us to take back? The engine wants us to take back with the sea pawn immediately pressuring the queen. All right. So we went with the D capture, which allows a little bit of, of it allows white back into the game a little bit, but really, yeah, that retreat, hmm. The engine wants me to really attack this knight. Um, but let's turn the engine off for a second. So these are these are what I was looking at. This and then capture, but I don't have access to this pawn as much as I'd like it. Um, I guess I do. Hmm. Um, the other thing I was looking at, let's go back. Um, the other thing I was looking at is capture. Yeah, the, it forces queen to capture back um, because you don't have time to do anything else. Whereas this, you do allow this capture, but then you just lose a whole nother piece. And, and white has no attack. Yeah, and that's just good for black all around. Um, capture, queen captures, and then the king, or queen captures back, so I'm up a whole, whole nother piece there. So yeah, capture, it allows this, and then there's really, yeah, this is a tough position for white right here, really tough position for white, and really anything, any capture is good, because this forces the capture back. And then even though I grab again, my queen is defended multiple times, so I'm not in any danger. Okay, yeah, so either capture really is, a good, is good for, for black. So, yeah, no, no stress there at all. I captured D-pawn. My opponent chose to just retreat, just give it up, just let it go, um, which allowed me to continue development. Get the queen trade. And I mean, at the, if we look at this point, um, I have four pieces. My opponent has, I have four pieces. I have three pieces. My opponent has three pieces. Um, we're even in material. Three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So black is up one pawn. But if we look at the evaluation, evaluation is extremely strong in black's favor. Not nearly as what it could have been. I mean, not nearly as what you know, could have been, but that's all right. Black is still extremely up in this point in time.
Yeah, this is an interesting move. I, I'm not gonna lie. This is interesting because it does, this capture does come with check. And so in the back of your mind, you always have to understand that um, this capture gives a free move to white. So no matter what you're setting up, if, if you allow this capture to happen, it comes with check. Black has, you know, obviously ways to, to get out of it, but it forces black to move out of check, giving white the next move. So whenever there's a check like that, it gives your opponent two moves in a row, more or less. And so you do have to be careful. And with it being just a pawn, even if my even if my opponent never captures back, right? Let's say I make um, let's say I make a move, whatever, and my opponent captures with check. If I, even if they don't capture back, like it gives them the next move. And so that's something you always have to be have to be cautious of. Um, my opponent could easily sacrifice a pawn or initiate a pawn trade for the sole purpose of getting that tempo back. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, in this position, this doesn't work. Um, there's just too many other threats on the board. Um, everything I have is pretty much defended. I have to be careful about my bishops are not defended, so I, I was always keeping an eye on when do I need to move my rooks into the game to um, get them defended. But there's a hanging piece here. Um, I was able to grab a hanging piece. My opponent was unable to do anything about it. There's another hanging piece here. So unfortunately, the game sort of fell apart at this point in time. There's just too much material. Yeah, the game just wants me to start trading down. I mean, the engine wants me to just trade down, um, get rid of everything. I, I'm, I'm really mad at myself for not seeing this. Oh, but that's that's okay. That's giving up two pieces. Okay, okay, I missed that because I'm undefending my knight, and so I'm giving up the knight and the bishop for a rook. So I'm giving up two pieces for a rook. It's not in this particular position. It's not the end of the world. I don't think because a piece and a rook versus a piece. Yeah, I'm still up a full rook at this point in time. Whereas right here, I'm up. Oh, I'm just up a, yeah, I'm up two pieces. So do you want to be up two pieces or do you want to be up a rook? Both are hugely winning advantages. Um, yeah, and then bringing the knight around here, oops, bringing the knight around here, that's just defends it. It's a really strong knight, um, but this, okay, yeah, this is a good move here because I do lose material in the process, but I've got that. Oh, he's got it covered, so... Yeah, uh, at this point in time, I'd have two rooks and a piece. Yeah, so I'd only be up a piece. So I'd give up a piece for that huge initiative, and it's just not worth it. So yeah, I did... My opponent missed this, thank goodness, but I missed it as well. I saw that I had it covered, but this means my bishop is overloaded. So that's another tactical thing that we really need to pay attention to, is this bishop is trying to do two things at once. Defend of the knight and defend this square. Um, the bishop is overloaded. If my opponent makes one move, the other one becomes free. Right? If he had captured here, I capture back, and then he has a fork. You know, it doesn't matter what he gets, he has a fork, and so he picks up a free rook at the end of that. And so my advantage is slowly whittling away. But we both missed it. We both had plenty of time on the clock. Uh, I decided to just go for the aggressive strategy, and unfortunately, things really fell apart here for my opponent. It's too much material. I'm up. Just way too much material, and now it's just a matter of cleanup. There's really nothing here to worry about. Yeah, I could have retreated easily. I could have picked up the pawn here, give my opponent a chance to capture, but the only reason I did this, the only reason I threw it away, is it just it really eliminates any possibility of my opponent having triple connected pawns and these two will be able to stop all three of those but at this point in time I have um, there's just nothing here um, my opponent has two pawns to all this there, there's, there's nothing more um, I mean at this point in time I could even trade away both of these 
and have triple connect, you know, pick up this pawn here, right? Um, and then I could literally sacrifice my bishop. Um, I could even sacrifice the, the rook and um, have triple connected pawns here. Two pawn, pawns, connected pawns on the outside. My opponent's king can't stop both. It, it's, it's way too much of a winning uh, advantage, but that's neither here nor there. Anyway, we got the win. Hooray. More importantly, we played good chess against a really strong opponent, right? This part, opponent is, um, is ranked um, 1631, 1638 um, in Rapid, and we have proved that we belong up on this higher end. I'm still not ready to call myself a 1600 player yet because I just barely cracked that threshold. My peak, I'm at my peak rating right now. And if you, if you consider your ELO as a bell curve, I'm way over here. So I will settle back in the mid 1500s, we'll call it. I think that's a fair estimate of where we are. So a mid 1500s playing at his peak rating right now against strong opponents. And we have played good chess. We are actually on a slight win streak right now against some really strong opponents. You guys saw my most recent video where I played against a 1671. Um, shortly before that was a 1640. Um, shortly before this game was another 1640-ish. So we're, it's working, right? Our studies are, are labor of going over and reviewing our ga our games and you know doing this extra little bit it's working and look if it can work for an idiot like me it totally can work for you you guys can do this you guys will be way better than i am easily because your memories work so much better than mine does um and you'll be able to see these things and go oh yeah i remember that i don't remember my memory doesn't work that way and so i can't remember some of this extended theory and i have to play each position as if i'm seeing it for the first time um, that's why for me playing those puzzles is extremely helpful because it, it trains me um, to trains my decision making and as long as I can make good decisions I can play good chess and this is way higher than I thought I would get to so I'm happy I'm content and I'm gonna keep playing chess I know I'm gonna lose games totally prepared for that but as long as I keep making good decisions in the process even if I lose the games I'm happy right Anyway, I've rambled on uh, too much about this, but this was our game against uh, my opponent. Looks like from France, FR. Yeah, France. Uh, my French opponent here, who played a, a very strong, very intimidating game against me, um, but unfortunately made a few bad choices right around here that, um, that I was able to capitalize on. So that was really exciting. All right, guys, y'all have a great day, and I'll catch you in the next one.